Okay, in this lesson, we're going to discuss just some of the basics of probability that we have to deal with in our Intro to Stats class. So let's start with an example. Here's a simple example. It's a typical statistics question. You're dealing with uh, basic dichotomous data. You've got 20% right here of adult smoke. So there's your probability, right? So we know probability of smoking equals 0.2. Now, we're going to choose two adults randomly. We want to know what's the probability that they both smoke. We can use formulas for these types of questions, but we can also use just the basic ideas of logic with what I call the dash method. If we're choosing two people, we need two dashes. What's the probability that the first one smokes? 0.2. Probably the second one smokes, also 0.2. And since they both have to smoke, this is an and question, right? That 1 and 2 both smoke. So when we have and questions, we multiply. And the probability is 0.04. Now this technique works for both independent and dependent uh, data. So this data is independent. The probability that the first one smokes doesn't influence whether or not the probability of the second one smokes. A dependent data question would be, pick two cards, pick two cards from a deck. Uh, what's the probability that they're uh, both, let's say, uh, red? Well, the probability of a red card is good over total, which in this case there are 26 red cards over 52 red cards, which reduces to 1 half or 0.5. But we can't just say the probability that they're both red is 0.5 times 0.5, because once we choose that first card, there's now one less red card and one less total card. So the probability that the second card is also red is no longer exactly 0.5. It's pretty close. But if we want to be accurate, we should instead do 26 over 52 times 25 over 51, which gives us a slightly different answer. of 0 0.245 oh well 09 which you can see is pretty darn close to what we would have gotten if we just did 0.5 times 0.5 which is 0.25 All right, let's say we want to look at this same Harris poll data, but instead we're going to say what's the uh, probability that we have uh, one smoker and then one non-smoker when we pick two at random. Well, it's just 0.2 for the non-smoker times 0.8 for the non-smoker. So you can see that when we're dealing with and questions, it's simply just a multi-stage process. What's the probability of the first stage? What's the probability of the second stage? It can get a little difficult when the questions are more vague. This was a specific question. The first one smokes, the second one doesn't smoke. What if the question was more vague and it was just, we pick two people and just one of them smokes? Well, then now we have to take into account it could either be this case, or it could be the case of the first one not smoking and the second one smoking. Well, we already know that the um, probability of this first case is this. Well, isn't the, which by the way is 0.16, what's the probability of this? Well, isn't it the same thing but just in the opposite order? 0 0.8, 0 0.2 also equals 0.16. 
But since both of these cases satisfy the question, the probability that if we pick two people, one of them smokes, and we now have two different cases that work, and whenever we have multiple cases, we always have to add. So it's just 0.16 plus 0.16 equals 0.32. <coughs> Excuse me. So we've now taken um, an and question, right? Probably this happens and this happens, and an or question, and combine them, and we can see that it still is a pretty simple process if we just look at it logically. Now, yes, there are formulas that will take care of this for us. This is a binomial question, and you could use the binomial formula. And if you want to learn the binomial formula and how to apply it, that's awesome. It's very powerful. But for this class, it's not so necessary, so you can get by with just these basics. Okay, let's, uh, let's look at another example. What happens when we have data in categories? So in this case, we have a bunch of tennis players. They've been broken up into two different ways. Broken up by gender, male and female, and then broken up by whether or not their challenge was accepted. And so now, if we choose one of these 839 challenges at random, what's the probability of getting a challenge that was rejected? Well, aren't all of these challenges that were rejected so it still goes back to the basics of probability, which is just good over total. So in this case, our good are all of the rejected. So 288 plus 224. And the total is just all 839 challenges. So pretty simple, pretty basic question. What happens when the question gets a little bit more difficult? So how about this one? So now, one of 83 nine challenges is selected. Find the probability of getting a challenge that was made by a male player or was rejected. So now, we're going to still choose one, but we got to figure out our good are both male players or things that were rejected. So visually, all of these are good, but aren't all of the male players also good? So, again, our good over total is 288 plus 224, those are the rejected ones, plus the 201 all over 839. Now in the book, and in a, a, a real probability class, they talk about conditional probability, and they get into the whole thing of, well, we could just do the probability that they're male, plus the probability that they were rejected. But because there's an overlap, we have to subtract the probability of both. And visually, you can see that all right, with red, probability of male, there's probability of male, and with green, probability of rejected, here's probability of rejected, and you can see that the uh, 288 was counted twice. So if we did probability of male, it would be 224 plus 288. Oh, no, oh, sorry, that's probably rejected. So I just backed up and got rid of that. Okay, so if we did probability of mail now, we get 201 plus 288 over 839 plus probability rejected. 288 plus 224 over 839 minus the probability of both. There are 288 that were both. 
and you see we get the exact same answer doing it this way. This is just a little bit more complicated, but this does um, follow the formulas that you will see in the book. Okay. Again, let's look at a simple example. Using that same table, let's now pick two. What's the probability they were uh, both rejected? Well, as we saw before, the probability that they're rejected is right here. We did it here. And so that's a total of 288 plus 224. That's 512 over 839. So now if we go back to this page, isn't this just going to be 512 over 839? That's our first pick that has to be rejected times our second pick, which is now going to be 511 over 838. See again, one less because there's one less total rejected calls out of one less total challenge. So the same kind of idea as picking those two red cards out of a deck. Okay, so before we had the or question, what was the probability they were rejected or was made by a male, now they've changed it up and they've given us an and question. What's the probability that it was accepted and made by a female player? So now instead of an or, we have an and. And the difference now is, okay, accepted. So there's my accepted. And then the female, there are all of the female ones. And so if it was an or question, we'd be thinking, OK, all of these are good, and all of these are good, and we just have to add all those together like before. But this is not an or, this is an and. So we're looking for things that have both of those qualities. And can you all see that it's just the overlap? 126 over 839. Okay. The last example that the book gave us for this type of question, we're going to select two different, find the probability that they were both accepted and made by female players. Well, that's just like the example I did earlier. Here's my two challenges, right? my two dashes. They both have to be accepted and made by female. Well, there's the 126. Out of 839. And now there's 125 out of 838. All right. Those are the basics.